Hugh Dennis and I have spent the summer on an epic tour in search of independent British drinks. Isn't that rewarding? It's very rewarding. This is absolutely tremendous. We've taken our campus south and north. You could tell that's a diner rod or something. To Scotland and Ireland. You want to get in here, because there are various other holes I could put this stuff in. <laughs> now it's nearly time to open our pub for one night only and take each other on with rival bars. You're being very competitive. Take it seriously. We've assembled some of the most irresistible drinks Britain has to offer. Some of the finest spirits. Come on in. This is where the magic happens. God. Award-winning Sussex fizz. Ginger beer that packs a priestly punch. That is powerful stuff. And scrumptious cider from the West Country. Well, I used to drink about 20 punts one time a day. Now, with a clash at the taverns just around the corner, we need to gather the last of our drinks and bar snacks. Now, well, that is fantastic. Yeah, you yeah. Yeah, you Which, as I say, port scratchings are one of the sexiest things in the world. And learn about what our customers really want. Both men. <laughs> Women. We've now found that women want you to spoon your nuts. <laughs> and finally, we pit my taste against Hughes in a climactic battle of the bars. Another sparkling wine. Homebrew. Who wants homebrew? And that's whiskey beer. If we get it right, there'll be a pub full of winners. Cheers, mate. Well done. I reckon that was really close. And just one loser. amassed a wild and wonderful collection of British drinks, but what we haven't got is any pub know-how. And I think the answer to that might be to go to a pub. We haven't been going to enough pubs. We need to go to a pub. <laughs> well, I've heard there's a fantastic pub in a quaint Herefordshire village. What a friendly local. Of course. I mean, the whole place is full of them. Here it is. This, this is one of the last examples of what pubs should be like hundreds of years ago. There's no bar, there's no counter, there's nothing. It's called a lounge inn. They were called parlour inns. Yeah. This is a public house that really is just that. Well, that must be where we get a drink. Yeah. <laughs> a public house. Well, you've all got drinks. Where do we get a drink? Yeah. Where do we go? Yeah. One of the last remaining parlour inns, the sun has been run just like this for over 200 years. Today, it's a piece of living history. You're the bloke who's us a drink. That's right. Please do so. I'd say Oz is pretty keen on a drink, but where is it? Barrels. Of course, it's a house in the kitchen. This is the way that beer is at its best, stored like this and just served from the barrel. So you haven't got a bar or something, how do you take the money in? Well, he hasn't yet, because you've not paid <laughs> <it>. <laughs> it's, it's not a lot of money, actually, yeah, is it? No, the money's... What about 40? Yeah. It's in there. There's the honesty box in there. The notes and the, the coins are there. In here? Yeah. And to be honest, you've been privileged tonight, because well, I've served you, and a lot of the regulars have to serve yourselves. Yeah, yeah. They also do some very tasty-looking pub grub. What have we got? Squirrel. Squirrel. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> what? Did you go around the A44 in the morning and picking them all off the road no, at 6 No, no, they've been, they've been trapped. <laughs> <laughs> they've been hit by something. They're not roadkill, anyway. No. Oh, they would have been if we'd been around, I tell you. <laughs> Actually, squirrel is very low in fat, high in iron, with tonnes of vitamin B12. It's a bit like chicken, isn't it? A bit like rabbit. It's like a furry chicken that climbs trees. <laughs> Does it go well with your bitter? It's quite bony, isn't it? <laughs> There's a lot of bone. Yeah. There's a lot of bone. Uh, does it go well with my bitter? Yeah. I, I wonder when you'd answer. <laughs> I'm getting used to this. I ask him a question, two days later he answers. <laughs> I'd better try one of these, actually, to see what it's like. Excuse me. See if it goes with see if it goes with the squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it fairly quickly. Yeah. Oh, I'm only a bit difficult to get. Is it good? <laughs> Who put that hair in my glass? <laughs> well, it certainly wasn't you. It wasn't <laughs> 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 
Uh oh, looks like High Waffles turned up. Am I allowed to ask? I mean, he's one thing eating a squirrel, but you appear to be wearing it. <laughs> no, that's, this is the uh, mayoral regalia, Mark II. Mm. Of what? Um, mayoral oh, regalia? Uh, what is he talking about? No, the mayor, the mayor of what? The uh, pub. Sunny. The, the pub has a mayor. The pub has a mayor. <laughs> yes. And you are the mayor of the I, pub. I have been democratically or uh, arbitrarily chosen. By yourself? No, by the good yeah, lady on the side. Yeah. To be this year's mayor. Oh, sorry. Why Demogra is that democratically chosen by this lady? Yes. yes. Or by everybody else? Yes. 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 Yeah, With yeah. everybody uh, else's uh, yeah. agreement. Yeah. <laughs> it's not democratic. <laughs> what power do you have over this gathering? Yeah. So I was the mayor last year. So and you're the mayor last year. Yeah. You, you could choose arbitrarily choose him. Yeah. Where is your office? <laughs> you're in it. You're in it. Did you ever see the Wicker Man? Yes. What if they turn on us? Make us mayor for the night or something. I think the great thing for me about this is that it hasn't involved any loss of dignity at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Yes>. Nothing. <laughs> I will now give you a speech at one word each. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Why doesn't the name of your village appear on the map? Lost in the Herefordshire Triangle. The thing to do is just to, just to back out slowly. <laughs> back out slowly. How about a pagan ritual for our pub? More like human sacrifice on a full moon. Well, we are going to need some bar snacks. And so to the final country in our grand tour of the United Kingdom. There you go, Oz. Wales. It's lovely. I bet you they put a male voice choir or something over this bit. Anyway, it's very beautiful. What have you got lined up for us? Well, when the Queen and Prince Philip were here last, they bought some of the local blackberry stout. And if it's good enough for royalty, I reckon it's probably good enough for our pub. So you are taking me to another brewery? I don't know why you always complain about breweries. In Ireland, you never even got there. I mean, perfectly good breweries set up. You like drinking beer more and more, I've noticed, and yet you, you don't seem to want to make the effort to go and see how it's made. Well, I've been to every brewery in Britain pretty well. You have not. I have. You've hardly been to any breweries at all. I tell you what, though, she's a female brewer. She'll make us do stuff, and I've done everything. She does everything herself. She won't even let her family touch any of the brewing. So don't worry, you won't have to do anything at all. You'll just have to sit there and drink the beer. The two-year-old wine brewery in Powys is run by Sue the Brew. It's already winning awards. Hi. Hi, Sue. Hello. Hi. 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 And you. You're Hi, Sue. Hi, you. I am. Nice <laughs> to meet you, Hugh. <laughs> this is it. This is it. Yes. The this lot. Is, this is all our brewery. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is our grain. This is what we would be using. Oh, right this is, in fact, what we would use in our blackberry stout, which we're making today. Blackberry oh. stout. Blackberry stout. Thing, yeah. 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 Fantastic. Really and the well. fantastic thing here is you do everything yourself. I do everything myself except for driving the van. But all the brewing. All is the done brewing by you. I do myself. Yeah, absolutely Told everything. You so. Yes. Yeah. So nothing we can do at all. Well, if you're really wanting to help, there are some blackberries that need picking for this brew. So you're more than welcome to, to do some of that for me if you like. Why did you ask? Why did you Ask. <laughs> you said you were fed up with breweries? So, would a, is a blackberry stout going to work in the bar? Yeah, it's a good idea, because basically stout's nice and dark, blackberries are dark, and stouts are sometimes rather dry. And so, so the fruit mixes fruit, with stout. Sweet blackberry fruit, rather good, I think. Are we going to try it then? Yeah. If we like it, we'll have it. This time of the year, by the way, they get bitten by a certain sort of fly which leaves a sourness in them, so be careful. The ones that have got flies on them, don't pick those. It's called the devil's bite. Have you ever been employed by an insomniac? Fly and all. <laughs> Come on, that's, that's enough. enough. There is more there. Don't care. OK. 
can Stanley Matthews beat Peter Shorten? <laughs> oh, damn. oh God, now I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mission accomplished. Excellent. Just. <laughs> yeah, like Excellent. Excellent. We actually threw quite a lot of them at each other. So. <laughs> but we kept the best ones for you. Fantastic. Thank you. So I guess I need to give you something in return here now, guys. Well, a drink would be nice. All right. You're going to sample some of your uh, lovely black out out here. Now that looks tremendous. There you go. It's dark, yeah. rich. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, Thank you. Lovely sort of cappuccino y kind of smell. And yet just a bit sweeter. Mmm. It's very good. Can I taste the blackberry? Mmm. What I get is bitterness rather than blackberries. And it's so reassuring as too many modern stouts and porters haven't got any bitterness. And the blackberries you just get on the finish. It just gives a tartness to the finish. Or, and also a very slight, fresh hit, glimmer of sweetness. Mm. Well, this is very good. I, was, I, I will admit, I wasn't that keen on going to another brewery because I've been to seven... How many was it? Seven hundred and... Seven hundred and thirteen. Yeah, but I'm very, very glad I came. Good. Glad to hear it. Yucky da. <laughs> Yucky da. Yucky da. Slancho. Slancho. Four. Va. Slancho. Slancho. Eighteen hundred. TDI. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs> right, we've got a pub to open and Sue's stout is still up for grabs. I liked it. I didn't taste many blackberries in it, to be honest. But well, we um... didn't pick many blackberries. <laughs> That's just a anyway, who's going to get it for the pub? I'll toss you for it. No, I'll rephrase that. Without going into details, Hugh won the toss and chose the Welsh start for his side of the pub. Our next destination is that most traditional of Welsh beer-drinking institutions, the rugby club. But it seems the times might be a-changing. By 2039, more Welsh men in pubs will drink wine than beer, apparently. Welsh men in pubs will drink more wine than beer? Yeah. Well, according to this, brilliant. I tell you, why... That we're going to the rugby club, we'll ask them. <laughs> you, you can ask them. Have we got life insurance? <laughs> Have we? In fact, we'll offer them some Welsh wine. Sugarloaf Blush is a medium dry rosé with delicious strawberry flavours. Sounds masculine. I bet we can change some age old habits. Doubtful. Look, he can't even use his arms. They're enormous. Oh, are you frightened? No, I'm not frightened. No. Well, let's get I'm more there. frightened for Go you because I know I can run a lot faster than you. If I'm right, and we don't end up tethered to a lamppost with no trousers, we'll have the Welsh wine for our pub. We've got a survey to show that Welsh men will shortly prefer wine to beer. I'll give you some nice pink blush and see what you think. We haven't got a hope. Yeah, no, you much. Sorry, yeah. Will you let me take away your glass of lager and give you a glass of wine instead? Not a chance. <laughs> Not over yet. Drinking behaviour is changing. Yep. From beer to Alco Pops. <laughs> so, what will the younger generation make of our sugarloaf wine? Are you sure that's Welsh? Ah, there's a palate ripe for education. Sensible taste. Right, who else? What about. Look at that. That's what I call enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. <laughs> so it seems to me on this, this table of rugby players, and he's looking all coy. What is that about? Do you prefer wine to beer? I love wine. In, in the general occasions of your... Yes, I can see you love it by the way you knock it back. Yep, right idea. Wrong glass. Well, it's not big, and it's not clever. Are you going to tell him? No, I'm not going to tell him. Hang on, there's another wine for our pub. It was. It wasn't really very delicate wine drinking. So it could have been the fact that it was free, but I think actually they, can't, they thought it was... They genuinely thought it tasted good. I think for the pub, it's made me think that we've probably got to have some wine on. 
If there are more men who drink wine by 2039, the country's going to have an enormous alcohol problem. It's going to run out of wine for a start. <laughs> That was fantastic, and I couldn't have been more wrong. I, I could not have been more wrong. Unbelievable. Look at that. All those great big <laughs> rugby lads all say that we drink wine. What yeah, did I tell every you? single one of them drank wine. One of them drank a pint of wine. <laughs> in about 12 seconds. Unbelievable. Listen <laughs> to this. There'll be two hours more of this. Yeah, no, well, I don't so want to leave. No, those lyrics are a bit dodgy, though. <laughs> well, I want to go back and learn some. That's <laughs> what? That's my favourite bit about rugby, all those bawdy songs they sing. Yes, but they wouldn't be allowed on television. I could always change the words. Maybe if I just lie here, like Lenin. It was on the good ship Venus. By Christ, you should have seen us. The figurehead was... Oh, I can't say that. The cabin boy's name was Ripper. He was a foul-mouthed little nipper. We're doing well. No, we're not. No, we're not. The cook's name was Bilky. His hands were soft and silky. He worked all night by candlelight to keep the porridge milky. <laughs> and when we reached our station, through skillful navigation, the ship got sunk in a wave of... No, 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 no. So what makes the porridge milky? Up at the crack of lunchtime. Well, I am. And with another tasty recipe up my sleeve, the one the rain denied us in Ireland. Carefully check your chief ingredients, then shove the rest up your bird. Yes, I'm cooking a classic Sunday roast. Beer butt chicken. Oz will love that. Just cook at a medium heat for about two hours for the perfect Sunday lunch. So lunch is underway, Oz is awake, and this campsite even has a luxury latrine. Happy days. What are you doing? I'm on an archaeological dig. Or in my wash bag. There are a couple of things you'll know them when you find them. Don't take them out. So what does the world's finest palette regard as wash time essentials? Corkscrew. Why have you got a corkscrew in your sponge bag? Oh, yeah, God. Stop it. Sherwood lights. Yeah, you've got another curry. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is fantastic. Helen the Rubenstein eye sculptor with prophenol. What, what is wrong with, with that? Well, one, there isn't anything in it, which means you've actually used most of it, haven't you? Yes. You've used Helen the Rubenstein eye sculptor. And you haven't even noticed. What does it do? It sculpts your eyes. To look like what? Fat head. Got it to... <laughs> What's it for? You look marginally better in the morning. Well, that's been incredibly instructive. Thank you very much. Is it ready yet? No. Is it ready yet? Yes. You're gonna like this. Oh! Look at that! Look at that! It's dripping beer. I'm very worried about the new me. And there's still some beer in the can, look at that. It's an old recipe, Lego Brester. I'd like whatever, but it won't kill me. Well, I think it'll all be fine. Right? I think this is a... You've rediscovered the ancient art of... <laughs> of peaking crispy chicken. It smells like beer, but not beer as we know it. It smells like beer that's probably been drunk before. So tell you what I've tasted of. What? Quite dry chicken. <sighs> Well, I would say that's <laughs> all it needed, really. That beer makes a really good gravy. I think you've discovered something. 
I'm glad we Good put beer. the table here because this is perfect. Why did, did, did right. you put the... <laughs> Not really me! Now, before we leave Wales, I want to introduce you to a really good Welsh bitter. In a field? Yes. Monty's Sunshine Beer is a golden, hoppy and floral bitter, recently voted one of the top ten real ales in the UK. It's very popular with the locals around here. It the white... Oh, yes! It's like BP all over again. All right, a bit of life in there. Um, Great. Right, well, can I have some then? Well, it's not for you, you, it's for the cows. <laughs> and why on earth? Hey, oh, oh, hey, yeah, yeah. Why on earth are you yeah. feeding them beer? It keeps them quiet. Um, they're easier to handle, and it makes them taste better. And how much of this do they have a day, then? About half a gallon each. Half a gallon yes. each? Yes, So that's what, half a gallon is four pints, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Perfect. It's less than you have, but... Uh... <laughs> I would have thought that you'd give them three or four pints of this stuff, then they'd all go and lie down, so they'd, they wouldn't be using all their muscles, get nice and fat. You've, you've and got then got they it, taste really. better, is that? Yes, yeah, that's and the theory, that is part of the theory. Well, if they have seven or eight pints, then they go and cause trouble in the local village. <laughs> well, they, I hope they don't start uh, fighting, though. They sing songs and they fight. Farmer Humphreys <laughs> rears his herd of Japanese black wagyu cows to produce sensuous and delectable Kobe-style beef. It's the most expensive beef in the world. Is the beer any good? Would you like to try some? I'd love to try some, yeah. We've got a glass. Oh, we've got, we have got a glass. <laughs> go on. Have a go. Cheers. Oh, it's got fruity. It's got well, not as feral as I. Could you suck that <laughs> bit off? I'm, I haven't got as big enough a tongue. What I need is that lovely tongue over there. Did you know that the cow's tongue is pink in the middle on the bottom and black round the edges? No, but it doesn't surprise me that you know that because you're fascinated by their eyes. So the mouth is just the next step. Not just the eyes, I tell you. We could, we could have uh, this beer in the pub, yeah. Monty's beer. If it's good enough for cows, it's good enough for you. I'm not sure that's a very good tag. Let's have another one. <laughs> 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 oh These pampered ladies who lunch on Monty's sunshine beer also enjoy a regular massage to their backsides. It's said to keep the meat juicy and tender. You'd love to massage one, though, wouldn't you? I'm hoping to, yeah. We'll get over there. That's right, the, yeah. This is the fella. Can I have a... Yeah, okay. please, please do. Oh, if you don't, go, 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 go. He's you coming. He, <laughs> he doesn't like the idea. No, I'm just going to, just going to, just don't, just don't, don't get frightened. What is it about me and cows? I think he's walking like this towards a cow. But what is, if, what? if you no. walk like that towards a cow, they think, one, it's a zombie. I don't know. <laughs> probably <laughs> come to get Wait to get hold it. Stop it. Do come here. Towards a cow. This looks like a reconstruction from Rural Crime Watch. It's just bizarre what he is prepared to do. What is he doing? Oz Clark, Cow Whisperer. Oh, He's calmed down. <laughs> He's fallen over. <laughs> I think classically, he will have slipped on a cow pat. <laughs> What's happened to you there is exactly what happened to you the last time you were in a theatre. Everyone's run away. Just for the sheer amusement, I think Oz deserves the beer for his side of the pub. I'm sure the cows won't mind. I suppose they might mind about this bit, though. Oh. Well, well that is fantastic. That's got to be the one. genuinely you... fantastic. Isn't that lovely? Could we have that as a snack in our pub? Well, the point is... Will people be prepared to pay £80 pounds or more? For Even a snack, it might cost £120 in London. Oh, well, that'd be fine. A kilo? Not, not for a piece. You have that on your side of the pub, right? <laughs> All right. 
I'm going to have peanuts that, that for 35p for about 400 peanuts. That will be, that more, will be the market I'm aiming at. Yes, I know. That's fantastic, though. Yucky da. Well done. Yucky da. Yucky da. Yucky da. Yucky da. Yucky da. What do I mean? <laughs> <laughs> We're armed with Welsh wine, blackberry stout, and Monty's Sunshine Bitter. Now it's back to England with our boozy booty. There you go, look. Border. England. Quick, stop. Uh, pull in. Put, no, put, pull in here. There's something I've got to do before I leave Wales. Could you not have gone before we left? Not that. What are you doing? Excuse me. What are you doing? Well, <laughs> this is the last bit of land in Wales. Yeah. And it's the land of my father's. So it's I the thought. Land of a quarter of your father's. Yes, all right then. At least. I thought <coughs> I would toast to Wales before we left Wales in Welsh whiskey. Oh, anyway, right, here we are. Here's to the land of my father's. Splendid. Very good to have done. I'm delighted. I'm going back over here now. Where are you going? We've got to go. Where are you going? Here I am on the first sod of fair English soil. So I've got a bottle of English whiskey and I'm going to toast my adopted land. Here's to you, England, in English whisky. This single malt comes from the first whisky distillery in England for over a hundred years. Thank you. Excellent. It's a little like a sort of alcoholic hobbit. Welsh whisky, by the way, was possibly the first whisky ever. They make whisky all over the place. What do you think the Swiss call their whisky? Swisky. Very good. Yeah. That's exactly what they call it. See what I have to put up with. Pearls before swine. So is that a new tradition of yours, that drinking, toasting a country as you leave it? No, it's a brilliant tradition. Leave a country, toast it. Arrive in a new one, toast it. I don't understand where the whisky came from, though, because we haven't actually been to get any Welsh whisky. Yeah, but the thing about Welsh whisky is that it, it's possibly the original whisky that before Ireland and definitely before Scotland, in, in about 425, something like that, a bloke called, a great chieftain called Hir Chiawch, uh, who was... Have you, got, have you got a cloth? Just to do that. So, from Wales to Herefordshire and onwards to Warwickshire. Next stop, another campsite without a shower. Oh. <sighs> It's so difficult about getting some hot water. Mm, I'm looking forward to a really good fry up. Black pudding, chipolata, towel. Oh. Is that it? Is that it? Pathetic. Oh, hang on. Don't look. Mind your own business. You're putting me off my breakfast. I don't know how you do that. How can you drink at breakfast? Well, you're in charge of the breakfast. There's no coffee. Where are we going today? Going to a pork scratching factory. More pork. Why have I cooked this? Why have you let me cook a fried breakfast? It's delicious. That I rarely have when I'm going to have pork scratchings for the rest of the day. And why are we going there anyway? Because we've got to have some decent bar snacks for our pub, and it's nearly opening time. I'm not at all sure about this pork scratching special. Pork scratchings? I love a pork scratching. But I don't necessarily want to see a pork scratching being made. What, in it's case one it of takes the mystery away from it? It's like a pork pie, isn't it? You don't really want to know. Delicious, but you don't really want to know. 
This way, guys. Off to you. Through here? Yeah, through here. It's tremendous. Oh, yeah. But here at Midland Snacks, we get down to the fatty facts with pork scratching zealot Nigel Moore. Oh, hello. Yeah, this is where the process starts. Um, frozen, minus 20 degrees C, block of quality rind. And this is exactly what we do with it 550 times a day. Down the shoes. Would you press the button? And we're starting the production process. Something quite serious is happening in there. Uh, and we can see the block now being cut. You can pull the tray out underneath to see the amount of rind. That is massive, isn't it? That isn't one pork scratching, is it? a pork chop. This is a perfect size for a scratching. When you actually render the product in the cooking process, you lose two thirds of that size. And rendering is what? It's just the melting down of fat, is it? It's rendering? just rendering off the fat. Well, it's not fat, it's lard. It's pure lard. The bit that we use in terms of this, uh, this particular product is the top half of the uh, leg, the shank. We only use that bit which is the softest, tenderest part of the pig. Because when you think about it, Hugh, if you, right at the top of your leg there is, in fact, the softest bit. Are you aware of the BBC's taste and decency rules? Yes, I am. I'm doing a very specific, simple fact. <laughs> the top of your leg, where the sun goeth not, that is the softest bit. Yeah. Just trying to be helpful. Well, it's, it's nice to see you guys entering into the spirit of it, cos I see sport scratchings as one of the sexiest things in the world. Yeah, I do. Have you seen someone about this? <laughs> no. I'm not taking therapy, I'm, that's for sure. So what happens after the therapy? You could go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on swiftly. To the really sexy deep fat fryer. Whoa. It's hitting it now at about 170, 180 degrees C. As you can see, it's like a cauldron of hot oil and steam. And how long do they have to cook for? Scratchings in uh, this temperature all will be there for about, about an hour and a half. I bet you can't wait to taste these guys, can you? Hey, lovely, <laughs> lovely, lovely. Hmm, doesn't turn me on exactly, but it's uh, quite nice. Delicious. Mm. Absolutely delicious. You get quite excited. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I think mean, you need to go and have a sit down. <laughs> or a cold shower, I'm not sure which to offer. Look at this. Just very, very simple flavour, this. Well, everyone fights over their roast pork on the Sunday lunch. That's the nearest you can get to a roast pork crackling from Sunday lunchtime. What we do now with them on the racks now, we, we move them round into the cooling room before we then actually go into the next process, which is very important, because it removes nipples, hairs, and anything else that's a foreign object in the scratching. If so you're only buying this bit of the thigh, we don't get why any are nipples. there any nipples in there? Well, we look for them, just in case. Now, the extremely serious business of quality control. Take me to your leader. Oh. Oh, that is gross. Look at it? that. That is a beauty. Two gorgeous great bristles. 43% of that is as good for you as olive oil. That makes 57% not good for you. No, no, another 13% is stearic acid, which is a neutral kind of thing. So basically, f uh, 40, 56%. Oh, lovely. That is. Yeah, you, you, could, you could actually be an air hostess or, in fact, the pilot. You. Found any nipples? No, I haven't found any nipples. Not one. The lovely thing about pork scratches I find is when you've had a few pork scratches, you're actually gagging for your next pint of beer, so it's brilliant for pubs. I wonder if any other tender piggy tidbits would make a tasty pork scratching. Well, we won't know unless we try. Pig nipples. Look at that. Yeah, look. It's deeply unpleasant, isn't it? That's no, not. Beautiful nipple. They've got nice meat behind it there. Bit of fat, bit of meat. It might be a really, really good, tasty snack. I can't quite believe Ozzy's doing this. Lovely. Put one in for me. Believe me, they're both for you. Well, oh, looking forward uh, to it. Yeah, very much. But what we're doing here is a little bit of a social service because these are very edible things which cost very, very little and are completely going to waste. Do you see that? The nipple is self-writing. Honestly. Whenever you turn the nipple upside down to get more crackly, it self-writes. Honestly, the exorcist was less disturbing than this. Now, what do you reckon? I think that is the, one of the most unpleasant things I've ever seen in my life. And, um... I think it looks like some, one of those... Is it stolen cakes, I think, mean, the Austrians make? It looks like a nipple... Doesn't ..that's it? been fried in boiling oil. And now for the moment of truth. Do I have to? Oh. Yes. Deep fried pork tidbit. Mm. 
bit overcooked. No, that's about right. It doesn't become... taste any different, does it, from another pork scratching? But I just can't get out of my head the fact that that is a nipple. We're really not going to use them in our pub. So what... No, thank you. So what do you think? What's the conclusion? What? I personally would just go for nuts. Oh, no, now they're staring at me. I'm simply pushing the envelope of taste. In any sense, you can't buy those in a pub. Now, this pub we're going to open, who's going to come? Uh-oh, there's something we've completely forgotten. Women. <gasps> Women! Very good point. Now, as luck would have it, we're only a few miles away from a brewery that's holding an all-women's beer tasting. It's the perfect opportunity to find out exactly what women want from a pub. We'd better come up with some incisive and penetrating questions. What do you think women like about pubs and don't like about pubs? Men and men. What three drinks would you want every pub to serve? Beer. No, no, I'm not asking you. I'm not, we were asking, these are questions for the women. What is your favourite British tipple? Probably, when I'm in the mood, really nice it's draft bitter. It's all for you. These aren't questions for you. These are questions for the women. Is that a good question to ask the women? Yeah, that's a very good question. Yeah. OK, what's the best chat-up line a bloke Do you can... think we ought maybe to... Find out a bit more about what women like in pubs. I've just asked you, what's the best chat up line? It's an excellent thing that women will really want to have a bloke with a good chat up line. I mean, they go to pubs for the same what reason about, as we go. What's the worst chat up line? Excellent. They're just as good to have both. There's probably someone coming in saying something like, There's a party going on in my mouth. Would you like to join in? Have you ever said that to someone? No, I've never said that. I've almost been terrible at chat up lines. At what point do you turn to your partner and say, Enough. Enough. Well, that'll be different for everybody, won't it? That's, well, that's, that's a good question. asking the question. Is it? Then it's How a do you phrase it? How many are they allowed to have before they say, We are going home, pause, now? That's how it happens, isn't it? Very good question, that. What smell do women least like on a man's breath in a pub? That's a really important question. Important. This is a four-year-old microbrewery called Purity. They market their prize-winning Ubu Bitter to young people and women. So they hold regular female focus groups right here. The colours are that slightly darker, darker isn't it? Yeah, that's a darker, yeah. yeah. So, are you ready with our in-depth survey? Uh, we've got 13 questions. Oh, hang on. 13 questions. Does this not look quite serious? That looks to me like uh, Ubu, because that looks like the darkest. I think I'll let you do the talking. And that's Mad Goose, yeah, and that looks like Mad Goose to me. We're travelling around Britain, and we're trying to work out... You know, we're trying to put together a British pub, aren't we? That's right. At the end of it, a best of British pub. Our pub. It occurred to us... <laughs> what a frightening thought that is. <laughs> it occurred to us that we didn't know anything at all about what women want. Um... <laughs> It occurred to him. <laughs> yeah. no. What's your favourite British tipple? Gin and tonic. Beer! Gin and tonic. Cider. 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 It's the way forward. Mm. Beer is the way forward. You can't say that if I want you to say things he says cider. This, this is great, there could be a fight. <laughs> um, what bar snacks would you like? Nuts. 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 I knew I was right. To go with it, a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> a spoon. Did you hear that? <laughs> they, this. It's really a spoon to spoon your peanuts because you don't know it. Mm. I've never heard a more bizarre, <laughs> non-masculine idea. Yeah, no, is, 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 yeah. So this is why we're here. This is because we've now found that that women want you to spoon your nuts. <laughs> what makes a man attractive to a woman in a pub? Wallet. <laughs> Someone said wallet. <laughs> this is all good stuff. It's very good stuff. What, what is the worst chat-up line you have ever heard? If you were a bogey, I'd pick you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry, I wish I'd never said it. <laughs> Fantastic, great. <laughs> I'm going to use that. Because yeah. yeah. it'll get the conversation yeah. going, won't it? Yeah. 
Well, I mean, that leads to what is the best chat-up line you've ever had on you? Would you like a drink? <laughs> I've spent years of my life trying to find out what the golden question is, and it's, yeah. would you like a drink? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can Not I buy you a drink? Yeah. Can I buy you a drink? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Not would you like a drink, but can I buy you a drink? Yeah. Yeah. I've been on the wrong track for so long. <laughs> it doesn't show. Uh, how, many, <laughs> how many pints is your partner allowed to have before you get cross and say, we're going home now? now. <laughs> Five. You're my kind of girl. Yeah. And do they feel to you look like, like they are very male places, pubs? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Lots of them. Lots of them. Yeah. How could you make them more female friendly? Yeah. I'm really up for real good, decent food and, and some nicer glasses yeah. to serve yeah. everything yeah. in. Nicer you know? glasses? Yeah. Yeah. Really nicer glasses. Yeah. Don't you like those big pint glasses? No. No. They're horrible. Well, we will, we will see what we can do good. for you in our. I hope so. Yeah. In our pub. What so if you, you come along, you'll see we've taken everything on board. <laughs> <laughs> it's been very, very illuminating and not slightly frightening. <laughs> Cheers. 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 This beer is very popular with the ladies, and that's why I'm having it for my bar. Hmm, we'll see. Right. That was our last stop. It's time to open our pub. Well, it's almost time to open our pub. As weather watchers among you will be able to tell, it's taken us a little bit longer than he thought to get round to it. But it's worth the wait, because I found the ideal location slap bang in the middle of Britain. This isn't the middle of Britain, is it? This is Warwickshire. The middle of Britain is Lancashire, or some. In fact, if you count the Hebrides and you count Rockall and Gibraltar, it's probably somewhere. It's probably off the west coast of Ireland. Yeah, somewhere. Bang it's in the middle of the sea, OK. But anyway, <laughs> some people say that Meriden is actually the centre of England. Anyway, that's only four miles away from this pub. Well, it's still four miles. Do you know what? I don't care. This is a wonderful pub for our competition. You can stay out here all day talking to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the inn that Oz has chosen is this award-winning pub in Shoestoke, Warwickshire. Slap bang in the middle of, well, nowhere. Look, the main thing is it's a fantastic local pub. It's famous for its beer, and the landlord, Michael Pugh, is allowing us to take the helm this evening. What a great pub. So how do you feel about handing over your pub to us, then? I've never pulled a pint, for example. Well, it's, it's best to, if you haven't pulled a pint, it's best that I'll show you how to do it properly, and you'll be all right. Why don't I take you into the cellar? Show you the cellar. Good idea. You if somebody on. offers to take you down to the cellar, <laughs> that you need to be slightly wary of that. <laughs> Only if they're Austrian. No, OK. <laughs> Oz, these are your pulls. So here it is, the field of combat, our bar. You, these are your pulls here. But battle begins down below. All our beers nicely settled. 72 firkins of our carefully chosen ale, stouts and lagers. Oh. Ah. Oh. 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 OK, my turn. I'll do this one here. This is Spitting Feathers from Chester, remember that? I got stung by a wasp. You got stung by a wasp? Well, that was so, this honey beer's all mine. Oh. Thank God I'm wearing my cheap... My cheap watch. Now the chance to pull my first ever pint. That's it. <sighs> That's lovely. Mm. My first <laughs> today. Pint. No, my first <laughs> pulled pint. <laughs> All our drinks are here, and we've divided them up between us. Well, almost. Ubu, yeah, yeah, that was mine, wasn't it? Why would it be yours? What did you do to deserve it? Uh, what I did to deserve it was I banged a thing into it and I got a pipe running to it to my side of the bar. That goes to my side of the bar. That's a fait accompli, is this, Anne French? Pretty much. Damn it. All right, well, I'll have Lancashire's finest, Mad Monk Stout. Good. See you a bit. I'm going to go and pump some beer up. I don't think so. <laughs> It's just all air, but, but it's just another thing isn't connected at all. God, I hope I have. Oh, Lord. What's going on? It worked before. That is so 
utterly irresponsible. He's going to be doing the same stuff to me later on, isn't he? I just thought I'd get in first, that's all. If he thinks he's going to win just by getting me in a thoroughly bad temper, by just continually trying to undercut my attempts to run my side of the bar properly, he's got another thing coming. OK, but slightly underhand, but with time running out, fiendishly effective. If he's going to start cheating all the way through the evening, it's going to really spoil things. <sighs> right, time to show off the bountiful fruits of our summer's labours. This is your stuff here, this is my stuff here. Yeah. Possibly the finest collection of British drinks ever assembled under one roof. Is this my bottle of Kilbegan? Change of beer weapons, great. 504 pints of beer. Stop it. 71 pints of cider. Eight bottles of mead. <laughs> oh, no, honestly, I'd ask for your help if I didn't think this was worth it. But... 34 <laughs> bottles of English wine. Where's this come from? What? This one. Yours. Mine. 528 shots of spirits. I've got English whiskey, I've got Welsh whiskey, and I've got Scotch whiskey. 148 pints of lager. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And more. And 160 bottles of mixers. Oh, did we get a bottle of Kilbeg in each? Who's going to buy that then? Look at the label on it. What? It's all right. What does it say on it? Jellyfish. Oh. And finally, my secret weapon pork scratchings and local cheeses to lure customers to my side of the bar. They're wonderful cheeses. These Warwickshire cheeses, local cheeses. <clears throat> And these, these are pork pies made by a bloke who actually comes into the pub and drinks in this pub. He made the pork yeah, pies. Yeah. What's that? What's what? It's a trivia machine. A quiz machine in our pub? Well, in my pub. You, sorry, you seriously think people, people are going like to come to your side of the pub and you've got a, some wretched modern machine there? What's wrong with a quiz? It's only a quiz. It's a horrible machine in a lovely, old-fashioned pub. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Well, let the skirmish of the snacks begin. I know what ladies love. Nut cutlery. No one is going to choose your peanuts over my lot. You're going very competitive. Taking it seriously. Are you having a midlife crisis? I'm having a mid evening crisis, mostly caused by you. What are you doing around there? Mm -hmm. That is my side of the bar. I put that... <laughs> right. What is that? What is it? No, no, I've had enough of this. From the bar to the back wall of the saloon, the battle line is drawn across the griffin. I know normality, you know, is a quite a varied thing. It's quite a wide thing, isn't it? Yes. But you're definitely on the mad side of it. Not at all. My side, your side. The landlord here is a real ale expert, and his regulars definitely know their stuff. Both bars are full of our choices of the best of British. We've got an assistant each. It's seven o'clock. And it's opening time. Time to raise the bar. 100 discerning drinkers and two hours to decide which of our bars will serve the very best of British. OK, last chance to make your case. Welcome. Welcome to this gladiatorial contest of British drink. And you've got to decide tonight who has chosen the best of British drinks. So if you want to try wine from England's most northerly vineyard, if you want to try Ireland's most exciting pale ale, if you want to try Somerset's most traditional cider, if you want to try Wales's most Welsh whisky, Try it here, on my side of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I obviously I can't compete with Henry V here. Um, but all I would say is I also have a fantastic selection of locals. I have a Warwickshire beer here. On my side of the bar, there is more drink because I haven't drunk quite so much of it myself. <laughs> so, um, shall we commence? Let the competition start. <laughs> I have to give you a nap. <laughs> each customer has enough drinks tokens for plenty of drinks from each of the bars. And he who collects the most tokens in the next two hours wins. Okay. Oh, go Irish parallel. Now, Oz may be in his element, but that could be his undoing. 
There's one farm in Norfolk which has got 17 different brewers buying its barley, making 50 different beers from different bits of the field. Three of those. While he's chatting up the customers, I'm chalking up the orders. He's got great beers that I really like on the bar, but then ours is such a charmer and was telling us a bit more about the stories of the drinks. Just taking the time to have a bit of banter, a bit of a chat, even tasting customers' wine when they were defecting and not going for beer. He was trying wine and he was giving his opinion on whether it was good or not. I'll give you a sparkling wine. Sparkling wine I can give you, yeah. yeah. Sparkling wine, brilliant. That'll be the night ember. Look at that. It's too ubering. Because his wine's proved to sickly, so I've gone to Hughes Bar. I'm now enjoying the Innocent Gun, and this will see me off nicely. And I think Hughes Bar, in my mind at the moment, is winning. Here we go, and. Oh. So, who is making the early running? It's actually rather good. The chassis, that. that's 50! And 48 of them have been Ubu. <laughs> I think Hugh's got the most popular beer, single beer. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, out of the way. He's ahead and he's still cheating. Stop, stop it. Stop it. Cheers. 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 I think I might start again on that one. I'm struggling. Let's try the Cornish flavoured beers. Hang on, they're mine. No blueberries in this, but there's oysters in it. And there's a little bit of ginger. I've got one of Aussies, and he can't pour a pint, but the beer's good. I, got, I tried the jellyfish, because I was told there's lumps in it, and that was good enough to try. So now I'm trying the offal, and uh, so far so good. I haven't had any lumps yet. Uh, poor scratchings, absolutely gone. People really do like proper snacks. No one has even looked at the spoons in my nuts. But that, might, that can come later. There's plenty of time. <laughs> Don't win too. Ah. Next time. Look at that, you see that? I know, it's perfect. Fantastic. And in a way, it makes me look very, very impressive. You might just have the edge, to be fair. Um, he's a better looking one. <laughs> We've run out of Anvil Port Cider now. Jellyfish. And we're, Lovely, we're about to run out of Night Ember. It's not mine. Now for my home. Home brew we had. Brewed by a schoolboy in his bedroom, and his dad didn't know, but it was really good. I think we have discovered a genius in the making. Thank you. Roger Wilkins. Do you want a double or do you want a single? Here we go. Tom. Second most popular drink now is gin and tonic. So I've been, I've sent Ollie to steal all the tonic from Ozzy's fridge. And Oz hasn't noticed it. Ah, oh, but two can play at that game. So far, I have not had a single person asking for spirits. No, no, we've had a gin. No, have we? We've yeah. had a gin. We don't have any gin. I may have stolen it. I stole it. It's like. Oh, you stole it. Oh, Rebecca. A girl after Hugh and Genesis' own heart. <laughs> that's, that's my beer. beer. That's, no, that's my know. beer. We gave you one. No, that's um, my beer. Yeah. That's two. No, that's two. That's two. That's, that's, two. Two. that's my one, beer. One, 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 have one. One, one, have one. one back. One back. Thank you very much. Thank you. The Welsh whisky comes from a Madeira barrel, right? So that's got, that's why you've got extra Dark. colour in it. Look Dark, at the yeah. difference in colour. Yeah. And so that gives you a little bit more colour. Okay. And that's in a rum cask. So that's kind of bit rummy beer, and that's whiskey -y 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 beer. Whiskey. Yeah. Do you fancy that? I'm getting a tremendous feeling that people love their real beers. They take it's a little more difficult to persuade them to other stuff. But I tried one person on on, on the English whiskey, and four or five other people tried it and said we want some of that there's a couple of people there who've actually said, gone mad on the on the wilkins cider they're, they're liking the stuff which tastes of somewhere meantime london lager salt air um purity that i know of anything good rum cask beer and um uh, whiskey beer incredible oh, the blue the name of the famous horror. yes but i know what women want they like my quiz machine and this lady is fascinated by my patented peanut provider nuts with a spoon so you don't have to use your hands in this. No one's got a loo when you know. They're spooning the nuts. That shows the British populace can be can be persuaded to do absolutely anything, however they bonkers it is. They're nuts. Oh, I did say that. Last orders, ten minutes to go. Come on, get these drinks in. That's four mad monks I've served already. So the final straight and still all to play for. Two honey traps, two honey traps, and again two more of these spikes straight through you, Dennis, where it really hurts. <laughs> what would you like, <laughs> madam? Well, have some homebrew. Who wants some homebrew? Another sparkling wine. Homebrew. Who wants homebrew? <laughs> And that's the last of my Mount Pleasant wine from Morecambe Bay. Glass, you got a glass or not? 
It seems quite close actually between them both, so I wouldn't like to call it. Few seem to have a good start, but uh, I seem to be coming back, so uh, I wouldn't, I don't know, I think, I think I'll say Hugh because I've spent most of the time down back in the bar. Alright, it's, it's lacquering, isn't it? Stop drinking now, we're going to count the tickets now. Oh, oh I'll take it to <laughs> well, Give us ten minutes and I'll let you know the score, all right? I think he would be a very good manager for a large global multinational bar chain, and I would be a better landlord of a village pub. But uh, that may mean that he ends up uh, uh, selling more drink than I do tonight. Preparing yourself for defeat. You know? No, I'm yeah. not. No, I'm not. I'm actually saying what, I don't it, think takes, you are what, it, what it actually takes to be a good landlord. And one of the things is you've got to talk to people. You've got to become their friends. I've in been the bar. talking. I've been talking to him. I just haven't been lecturing them. Oz is going to win. He's very knowledgeable about what he's selling, the wine, the beers, and he's got a very attractive barmaid assisting him. It's, he's going to win. No problem. Possibly you, purely because I've seen tons of beers that I've heard about and not tried on his side of the bar. Ah, uh, I was all win this easy. Cheers, mate. Well done. I reckon that was really close. I reckon it was really good as well. Quiet! 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 Go on! Go on! Go, okay, I've got the results. I've counted on twice. Here we go then. You. <coughs> 384. Ozzy. 394. Oh! Uh, That's not 2%. bad, is it? 2%. Yeah. I'm entirely relaxed about the result, but I want to recount! <laughs> and with that, I rest my case. That is the most ridiculous summer I have ever had. You don't mean that. <laughs> you don't. Don't try, do you? You really don't. It's <laughs> the most wonderful summer I know, you've ever had. fantastic, yeah. But bizarre. It is bizarre. But isn't it good? And what's weird about it is there's a photographic record of it. I can't get away with it at all. <laughs> I can't pretend I was seeing anything else. Oh, yeah. It's time to call time on our great adventure. <laughs> In a way, I've been far more British than you, I think. Why? By, by losing. Well, by losing what? kind of elegantly. No, you've been losing with ill grace and you've been complaining bitter. In fact, you've been, it's a, you're a whinging pom rather than a British person. 